Hello everyone, this is my presentation on Harold Prince. Harold Prince was an accomplished Broadway producer and director who came to be known as the Prince of Broadway and the Reaper of Tonys. He received 21 Tony Awards along with many other recognitions and he is known for being the producer of many well-known shows such as The Pajama Game, Damn Yankees, and Fiddler on the Roof. He is also known for being the original director of many popular shows such as Company, Cabaret, Avida, and Sweeney Todd. Some biographical history is Harold Prince was born in New York City on January 30th, 1928, with parents who loved to take him to the theater. His parents were of Jewish and German descent and were named Harold Sr. and Blanche Prince. As he started to be surrounded by theater, he began to feel a love for the arts. This artistic beginning inspired him to attend the University of Pennsylvania, where he enrolled in a liberal arts degree to receive his BA in English. He graduated early in three years in 1948 while he was in school. He had found a non-paying job with George Abbott as his office boy for six months. He did this until he received the promotion to act as assistant manager in the 1949 musical Touch and Go. After his graduation, he had intended to use this time to get into the arts and start creating and experimenting, but he was unexpectedly drafted into the army in 1950, where he served in Germany for a time. His first works with George Abbott, uh, after he had his time in Germany, he continued the work he had found in the theater with his mentor, George Abbott. George Abbott had given Harold Prince another promotion, which gave him the opportunity to act as the stage manager for the 1953 musical that he was directing titled Wonderful Town, which ended up winning a Tony Award. Because of his hard work, George Abbott noticed Harold Prince's potential and told him that he would be a director. This inspired, inspired Harold to create works of his own. He stated, I knew I could do it, but I didn't have an individual voice. It's very important that you find what expresses you and what makes your work unique. After he finished work with George Abbott, Hal Prince connected with another one of George Abbott's stage managers named Robert Griffith. Together, they co-produced their first creation, The Pajama Game. There were many names in this production, such as Bob Bossy and Richard Adler, that were not, well, were not yet well known, which caused the production to be short of funds. I have a review of the production, of the original production, which stated, The Pajama Game includes all the usual properties of a loud and ample musical carnival. Um, it provides an original setting, and as usual, Mr. Abbott has provided the noise, speed, and excitement of an energetic and amusing show. So the sort of funds ended up to be okay because Harold Prince began his next project with Frederick Brissom and Richard Adler, who all together co-produced Damn Yankees in 1955. Both of these shows ended up to be successful and received many recognition, recognitions, such as Best Musical, Tony Awards under the direction of George Abbott. After some time of collaborating with these talented men and co-producing more works, Harold Prince decided he wanted to attempt to grow his career to something bigger. With this urge of inspiration, he found a friendship with the lyricist Stephen Sondheim, and this collaboration went on for years as they created many well-known shows, starting with West Side Story in 1957, which featured choreography and direction from Jerome Robbins. With this duo, they established the idea of the concept musical. In an interview, it is stated that they were both eager, and musical theater was just scratching the surface, and that they wanted to help it grow. So Harold Prince's and Stephen Sondheim created the idea for the concept musical by putting the emphasis of their work on a theme or a consistent message that they wanted to convey to the audience rather than the narrative. All of Harold, Harold Prince's ideas stemmed from ideas and themes because he wanted to provoke conversation within the audience members while staying true to his own choices. He directed the big hit Chicago in 1966. In the book titled Divine Decadence, there is a quote from Roger Detmer which stated that the production of Cabaret was a watered-down sweet charity with swastikas. After watching interviews, Hal Prince said how often that he wanted to make all of his works that he created his own. 
without following the traditional story. He used his own experiences and history and used it to create realistic feelings and stories within his work, such as his experience with the war. Harold Prince used his experience in Germany to influence how he wanted the overall look of Cabaret to be and how he wanted the audience to feel while watching it. So I'm going to show a clip about how Hal Prince explained how he tried to be true to himself and when he knew he wasn't the right person for the job, he wanted the show to stay authentic, so he didn't do it. Fiorello. Uh, almost at the same time, uh, Bach and Harnick came to me with, we had done Fiorello, with uh, a show based on Tevye and his daughters. And which became, of course, Fiddler on the, Fiddler roof. On the roof. And I, and they said, would you like to direct it? And I th thought it was wonderful. And I said, I'm ill-equipped to direct this. I don't understand the shtetl community. Though I'm Jewish, my background is German. And I don't understand that whole uh, Eastern European Russian thing. And uh, I, I, I'll tell you what. I said, there's only one director I think should direct this, and that's Jerome Robbins. So to end with that, a good overview of his early career was he produced um, Pajama Game in 1954, Dan Yankees in 1955, West Side Story in 1957, and finished with a funny thing that happened on the way to the forum in 1962. Harold Prince received his first big job directing and producing the 1963 musical She Loves Me. She Loves Me opened on April 23, 1963 in the Eugene O'Neill Theater. This musical gave Harold Prince his first Tony nomination for Best Direction of a Musical. Even though he didn't win this nomination, this the award, this musical began to see a future shows that Harold Prince would soon successfully direct, making a name for himself. Because of the many first days of rehearsal that Harold scheduled, he began known for for his inspirational first day of rehearsal speeches. The video I'll play in a few minutes shows how important he believed the first day of rehearsal was. He said because the introduction factor is in getting everyone on the same place and aware of the same goal that needs to be achieved made it one of the hardest and most important parts of creating a complete production. During these first rehearsals, he made clear that he wanted to achieve and what he was looking for from the cast. In the video, he says, give more of anything than anyone had seen before. So he would create the model for the show prior to the first rehearsal, including rough drafts of the costumes, where his inspiration came from for the production, and finish with making sure everyone is aware of the historical content and the material content. Yeah. I regard the first day of rehearsal as extremely important because it's an introduction of material to the people who will be working on it. And you all have to be in the same place as you approach a project. It's very important that somebody has a sort of total concept of what needs to be achieved because we all come wandering onto the stage, you know, we don't know our lines necessarily. Uh, actually, in, in Hal's case, you do know your lines. <laughs> so, an overview of his later career, he did and accomplished all of these shows. And he became known as the Prince of Broadway. Because of his continual success in award-winning shows, Harold Prince soon came to be known as the Prince of Broadway. He began to integrate musicals and make them seamless, which was one of the biggest things that he was made known for and one of the biggest contributions that he made to musical theater. Artists who could see his work, as well as work alongside him, would always explain how a viewer couldn't tell when the cast was talking and when they would start dancing, because it was just like they were just telling a complete story. Always progressing the story and they never stopped. And they never saw that division within his work. In the article written by David Kilroy, he is described as a vitalizing force. Stephen Sondheim described him in a 2016 interview by saying, The two things that characterize him most are energy and impatience. Throughout his career, how Prince's career, he received numerous awards and gained many titles for himself. He has earned 21 
Tony Awards for himself, which is the most Tony Awards that anyone has ever received throughout history, and he has won numerous awards for Best Musical and Best Direction of a Musical, as well as his two Special Tony Awards. He received his first Special Tony Award in 1972 for his accomplishments on Fiddler on the Roof, which he produced in 1964. He earned his second Special Tony Award in 2006, which was titled Lifetime Achievement in Theater, which acknowledged that he had won the most Tony Awards in the ceremony's history. Aside from the Tony Awards, Hal Prince received many awards from Drama Desk Awards and Outer Critics Award Circle for his direction abilities. Um, Harold Prince died in July 31st, 2019, in Iceland at 91 years old. Throughout his life, he made many accomplishments and made such a name for himself that he came to be known as the Giant of Broadway, the Prince of Broadway, and the Reaper of Tonys. Harold Prince managed to be successful in the arts during a time when Disney's musicals were the shows of interest and the popular types of music began to change to rock and roll, and he had the ability to have three shows running successfully at once. In addition to just being successful all around, he also directed and produced shows that dealt with serious issues in the world, such as anti-Semitism in the 1998 musical Parade, gay persecution and politics in the 1993 musical of Kiss of the Spider Woman, and the history that he brought into the 1966 musical Cabaret. Cabaret, which dealt with issues of Nazi dictators, dictatorship and how their lives had to stay hidden, was, the concept, was one of the concept musicals that set Harold Prince apart. Um, in an article, it is stated that war-related politics would attempt to be avoided in Broadway because people would often connect politics with something more personal, leaving them to opt for a more com comedic production. And in a book titled Divine Deficence, Decisence, it is stated that Hal Prince wanted to make Cabaret fit for a mainstream audience, while also make people uncomfortably aware of the issues surrounding the 1960s. This show started a new strand of musicals that included a dark nature that had not commonly been seen on the Broadway stage. All of these things began to inspire other artists and began to pave the way for new styles of Broadway shows that had begun to be produced. And to close, I would like to state this quote by Har Harold Prince. Bet on people, the odds are good. If you continue to bet on them, it will work. Everybody has failures, that's part of the game, but it will work as a formula if you just stick with it. Thank you, everybody.